What if I told you that one single belief could transform the way your students learn? It's not about grammar, vocabulary, or even pronunciation. It's about something much deeper. A belief that drives confidence, motivation, and success in the classroom. Welcome to the world of the belonging belief, where every student feels like they really belong. Stay with us because today we're diving into how this powerful concept can revolutionize the TESOL classroom and other classrooms as well. Helping your students go from hesitant to confident learners. All students want to belong and this taps into their self-assessment at a very root level and uh, they may t tell themselves certain narratives about themselves that facilitate learning or could inhibit learning. So, Holly, why don't you talk to us about what is the belonging belief? The belonging belief is individuals' perception in fitting in mm -hmm. as students uh, who feels uh, engaged and uh, in, in within a group of people or the community. Yeah, fitting in, I know that for adolescents that could be often a struggle. I think it's important to bear in mind that uh, belonging symbols or what's interpreted as uh, these symbols are neutral in and of themselves, but it's the belief that the students have about them that then they can interpret as belonging or anti-belonging beliefs. Students should feel like they're accepted and nourished in the classroom. So teachers should work hard in order to do that. So could you tell us about the importance of being belonged or engaged, the belonging belief? Yeah, well, this is how students can feel motivated, engaged, and work harder and achieve better results. And a lot of it depends on the teacher and showing that this, the students are respected, understood, valued, and that they're part of a larger educational community. Exactly, exactly. And, and when, when a student feels that they are engaged, they are going to be motivated and that will lead to a better results as well. And ultimately human flourishing, which is the goal of educators. We spoke about what belonging belief is and the importance of it in the classroom. So Patrick, could you tell us about how we build this in the classroom? Just tell us the points first. Well, it's about building relationships, creating and encouraging a safe environment, encouraging participation, uh, providing feedback, promoting inc inclusivity, and normalizing struggle. So Holly, building relationships with the students. Talk to us about this. Building relationships or rapport, as we studied this in the CELTA before. So teachers should connect, should make an effort to connect with the students uh, personally. They know their interests, what they like, what they dislike. So something about them in person. Okay. Building relationships, rapport, as we used to say in the CELTA, does not work without creating a safe environment. So could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, a safe environment is where students are free to make mistakes. We know that, especially in the English classroom, you have to make mistakes. But also where students know that their, their own unique emotional needs are going to be respected and this teacher will, of course, address any issues like inequality or bullying and provide emotional support. And also students should feel that taking risks and making mistakes is a normal thing in the classroom. Otherwise, they're not going to speak and they're, they're, not, they're not going to speak or, or participate out of fear of making mistakes. So our lovely teachers, remember how to build this sense of belonging by building connections building relationships, creating a safe environment, and encouraging participa participation. So could you tell us a little, bit, a little bit more about the fourth one, providing feedback, and what kinds of feedback should teachers give? Well, feedback should be constructive, always. It should also be personalized, 
and aim to having them learn more and more. Exactly, and it should be positive. Otherwise, yes. yeah, like it should be. Uh, if if you're going to give uh, students some negative or points to remember or to improve, it should be in person, I guess. It, or impersonal. For example, uh, like what we learned in the CELTA, if uh, one student is making a, a mistake, like a grammar mistake, rather than pointing out that they did something wrong, you get the whole class to repeat the right way of saying it, but in unison. Yeah, so you're not singling be, out the one person. Exactly. It doesn't have to be for just one person. Yeah. and. I try not to interrupt my students when they're reading aloud, uh, and of course we learned also in the, we only want to correct the, for example, the grammar point that we're working on. If, if they make a mistake but it's not really the subject of the lesson, we can let it go because we want to be clear about what we're working on at the time. Exactly, Patrick, and that's what's called the target language, TL. Even uh, in speaking, in speaking activities, students should not be corrected on every single mistake. Like, uh, it should be just on the target language. Number five, promoting inclusivity. Yeah, we want all students, regardless of their background or abilities, to feel included in the classroom. We also want students to know that struggle is normal. They're not the only ones that are going through this. Exactly, and this is our last point here uh, on what, how to build this sense of belonging. Students shouldn't uh, think that uh, they are the only one who are making mistakes or passing through these difficult moments. The problem with normalizing struggles, Patrick, that students feel they are unique to this. They mm -hmm. interpret it as like they are doing this. They are the only ones. So our role as teachers is to normalize struggles, to make it general, like to tell the students they are not alone and they are not the only ones uh, who are doing this. So that's normal and you should just uh, try more and more and make mistakes so students will take risks and we will be motivated and encouraged to, to do these things. Very well put, Holly, very well put. I think we also have to keep in mind this phenomenon of the negative stereotype. This is where students, out of a need to belong, and certainly adolesc adolescence is a difficult time and they're searching for identity, they might find meaning in accepting and conforming to a negative stereotype. I know when I was in high school, they were the, the skater dudes, and they're like, I'm too cool for school. And a teacher is going to want, is a balance. A teacher is going to want to try to integrate, show how, no, you, you can be a skater dude, and you can also uh, uh, be a good student. Um, an example is, is somebody who maybe they identify with a group outside of school, maybe more than they care about what's going on inside school. But I also think about, you know, in the developing world like the United States where there's the tendency to overdiagnose and there are these seemingly f uh, flavor of the month fad diagnoses uh, that are said to be genetic in origin, uh, you know, and students might take on a, an identity of thinking that they have a learning disorder where, where really it could just be as a phase and then they start to feel like they belong to that group. Look, I told you I have a friend in the United States, he's a consultant for universities and so he travels around, sees lots of different universities and he's told me that over the last 15 or 20 years, the centers for disabled students have gone through the roof, not because there are more students like with a classical disability like missing an arm or a leg, but because there's been such an expansion of what these terms actually mean. And so if students think that they have a learning problem, that is also something that can inhibit learning and also be something that conforms to like a negative stereotype.
That's it for today and remember, if you're an English teacher or you want to be an English teacher, don't forget to subscribe if you're watching from YouTube or you like our page if you're watching from Facebook. Or I have a bit too